So this is just a quick tip when dealing with STL files or OBJ files from external sources. It's come from a question from both Patreon and someone that's emailed me. They both have 3D files from external sources that they want to remove items from. Now to do that, I'm gonna load in the 3D object that they was using. And the item has come from fangs.com. And if we go over to this free delicious site, it's this grill here. So it's actually come from this grill that's passed me over to here. We can download that, but it comes down as a 3DS file. And the 3DS file can be converted from such a site as AnyConf to an object file or STL file for free and without registration. So we just load in the file here. I follow the online instructions and convert it down to an OBJ file. I can load that OBJ file in the mesh design workbench. That's imported in. So I'm going to come up to meshes, come into import mesh and select the mesh from here. If we look down, I can see I've got the OBJ file. I've also made an STL file as well. We'll hit open and our 3D model is in. Now with 3D models such as this, you can see it's made up of a number of parts. So we've got grills, the top and bottom casings, etc. there. Normally with this type of model, these are separate. So it could have been created from something like an assembly or something that hasn't been booleaned or fusioned together. That means that these individual ones can be sectioned off. When we section those off, they will appear as something called a component. We can do that quite easily by selecting on the original mesh, come up to meshes and come down to split by components. FreeCAD will try to split it out into the different components that it has. And you can see there's quite a lot from there. First thing we need to do is hide the top mesh, which is our original mesh, because if we try to select, it will always select the top one. To press the space bar there. Now we can get to the individual components. And if I click on, say, this top one here and come over to this component, you can see it's selected on the left hand side. And we can right click and transform and remove that from the object or use this elsewhere. Let's hit OK. The component that I really want is the grill within here. Now to get hold of this, I can click on the individual components of the grill. You can see them highlighted on the left hand side. I'm just going to select the underlining component, this one here, the dish, press the spacebar, otherwise it will keep on flashing as I move over it. So I'm going to control select all of these, holding down the control key and moving my way across, selecting each of the components of that grill. Those are selected now. I can come back to meshes and merge them back into a single component and you'll see that down here. I'm going to select all the rest, hold it on the shift key and select in the top one, and I can hit delete. That's removed them from the screen, and I can work with these individually. So I can split this back out into components by clicking on the mesh, come the meshes, come down to split by components, and we're back to the individual components there. Remember to select the top mesh, press the space bar so we can see those there. And we can say delete some of these. Like so, just click on, on them and hit delete. We can rearrange these. Say we can right click on this one and transform this and move it along. And hit OK. And we can create copies, edit, duplicate selection. See, we've got new component and right click transform. Once we've finished, we can put all these back together by shift selecting all of them, go out to meshes and then merge. We've got our final mesh and we can come out to meshes and export that mesh as an STL file or whatever type of file we need to use. One reason for this method, if I close this, so close all and get rid of what's on screen and import the model from the Patreon, 
Now this one is an STL model, so I can use the file import method. And we'll find the model for this one here, which is part of a model truck grill. Is that when I was using the resin printing method, then this part here, if you look to the side, you can see that it floats above these. So the idea was to actually move that part down onto the shutters or remove it entirely. So we can click on the mesh, come up to meshes, come down to split by components. We have the individual components. Let's click on the top grill and press the space bar so we can see those in there. And we can select those components. Even all the writing there. So we could change the writing if we wanted to. And if we come down to the bar, which is this one here, as you hover over them, you can see them highlighting. So this bar here, I just right click transformed and we can move that down onto those shutters like so. Or we can get rid of that entirely by hitting the delete key. And that allows us to resin print this without any problems. We just need to pull this back into a single mesh by highlighting them all, go to meshes and merge. Therefore we get our last mesh, which we can export out as an STL file. What I've done is just gone back to the original model and we're gonna look at changing the lettering on here. So we click on the model, come up to meshes and come down to split by components. And now we need to select the lettering. So I'm just gonna click on this one here. The top one is shown, which is the original mesh. Let's press the space bar to hide that. And also I'm gonna click on this one and hide that as well. We now got the lettering in front of us and I'm gonna go edit box selection and highlight this lettering. Select them all and hit delete. So those are now gone. Let's come over to the draft workbench, this one here, and show the grid. If the grid isn't aligned flat like this, we can click on top and come up to the utilities and use the select plane and align to view like so, or we could select say this here and go up to utilities and select plane. So that's aligned there. Now we can add some lettering. So I'm gonna bring this around to the left using the arrow key, zoom in. Now we're gonna add the text along here. We're gonna be using the drafting shape from text. And now we can select the font file. Oh, and Ubuntu, so this will be my users directory by going to the root, going to the users directory, be my shared. And we can come down to the fonts, true type, and select a font from here. I'm gonna go for deja vu. Set the height, we can change the height afterwards. And we just select where it's gonna go and type in what we want. And hit okay. Our font has been added, as you can see, it's too large. So we select the shape string, come down, and change the size. I'm hitting Control R to refresh it, and we can get it into position. Now it's there, we can use the Move tool. First select the shape string, click the Move tool, and we'll select it. I've got the snapping on, so you can see the snapping here, so snap lock. Sometimes this is basically over here somewhere, like so, and it just shows the lock and you can go in and select which ones you want. So I've got the center there, the locks on the center there, that means I snap to the center of these objects. So I'm just gonna click once and then move it into position, like so. 
and now come over to say the part workbench and this allows me to take this object and give it some extrusion just going to bring some of these toolbars out so I can get to them these will be in a different position in your setup but I'm going to come into the shape and we'll use the part extrude so we all know whereabouts that is I'm going to hit OK. Extrude it a bit too far, so we can select the extrude and reduce the length forward on the data tab. I'm going to press the down arrow key and hit Control R just to refresh it and get it into position. I'm going to go for 0.25. So that's there. Let's bring back the rest of the components. And I can see I need to transform that slightly. So click on the extrude, right click, transform, and we just move it up. For more accuracy, I'm going to hit OK and come into the extrude, look at the placement, look at the position, and you can see we've got the Z there. So we can change that. That's on there now. Now it's a case to embed this into this object. We need to convert this to a mesh. So let's come over to the mesh design. Make sure the extrude is selected and you'll see on the toolbar, create mesh from shape. So click that and we'll end up with the tessellation options. This is all to do with quality of that mesh. We can use the standard or we can use something like NetGen and I'm just going to go for a moderate quality on this because it is all planner faces. So if I hit OK, you'll see we have now got the extrude. So if it's something like curved faces, then we'll adjust the quality to be something a bit more finer. Now we've got that extrude, we can press the spacebar just to hide it. We've got the extruded mesh and I can control click all the others come up to the meshes and merge them together while these are still selected press the spacebar and you'll end up with the finished mesh ready to go with your modifications on there we can change the view to actually see that in more detail so I'm going to come up to draw style and come down to something like flat lines and you can see the mesh vertices and faces in there. So now I've started a new document. I'm going to show you how something will be created as a component. I'm going to create a cube in here along with another one. So I've got two cubes and we'll transform them so they're side by side or just overlapping like so. I can take these two cubes, control click them, and go file, export as an STL. Just again, downloads. Now, when I import that STL, file, import, and import that, and open that up, hide the original two cubes, press in the spacebar, we've got this STL file and it's basically acts as one. If I go back over to the mesh workbench, mesh design, come up to meshes and split by components, you can see we have the two components in there. And we can right click and transform and you see that's made up of those two cubes. But what happens when we fuse those together? So let's get rid of those components and that mesh and bring back the original cubes by pressing the spacebar on them. I'm not going to move them, I'm just going to control click the other cube so they're both selected. And to do this, we need to be in the part workbench. So those two are selected, come up to part, boolean, union them together. It's now one fusion. If I go to file, export that, and select the same STL file. Now, when I import that STL file, I'll import. 
double click it we'll hide the fusion we've still got the same object if i click on it and then come over to the meshes workbench the mesh design and come out to the meshes split by components we see we have one component so the whole process of boolean that part together means that it acts as one object rather than multiple parts so you see this in some assembly workbenches where you can actually export the assembly out as an SDL. When we bring that back in, that SDL file back in, it acts as one object until we split it down into the components where we can get back to the original components. So I hope that's helped explain how components work, how we can split those out, how we can modify things in there, add to them, and the reasons why maybe when we import an STL file, we'll only see one component, and that's because of the whole boolean process hope you're enjoying these videos and i hope to see you again soon if you like what you're seeing please subscribe to the site i also have a ko-fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0 i also run a patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content and that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you again soon.